Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this episode we're going to be talking about painting up a Beastman from the Fulgor Ravagers Kill Team set that was in Games Workshop's free miniature of the month. So let's dive in. Right, so our first step, we're going to be looking at painting the skin. And I'm going to do this because, in my opinion, it covers most of the model. And if you get that done, most of the model is already finished. So to begin, I apply a layer of King Purple all over the flesh areas of the model. I do this because I like the shadows to be this nice, rich, deep purple. Now I mix Grim Brown and Reddish Grey from AK Interactive in a mixture of 50-50. Now I'm applying this a bit more carefully so that I hit most of the flesh areas, but I leave those recesses purple. I've gone for a sort of lighter, almost like undead kind of skin tone, because I kind of feel they look a bit more demonic. And obviously being an agent of chaos, it sort of makes sense. So with the grim brown and reddish gray mix applied, it's now time to build up that flesh tone. We're gonna do this by adding pure reddish gray. And now I'm gonna start feathering this onto the model. And I do this so that it bleeds more into that previous step because we don't want really harsh transitions. Now I'm going to go onto the final highlight of the skin. I'm going to do this by mixing sand beige and reddish grey, both from Make Interactive. Now I do this in a two to one mix so that it's a fair bit lighter than the previous step. But I'm only going to be applying this to the higher points on the model, the parts that are facing upwards. <laughs> The next thing I want to focus on is the fabrics. So that's going to be sort of like his loincloth and there's a little bit on his chest as well. Now when I go into painting cloth, it's always a good idea to sort of think about texture and trying to sort of feather edges because effectively that kind of translates a bit more as a fabric. I don't like it when it's super smooth unless it's sort of sometimes like a flowing cape and you really want to amplify all the creases and things like that that some models have. But because this guy, you know, as a beastman, I think it's quite good to have it looking a little bit more rough. So I achieve this by mixing black and strong dark blue by AK Interactive in a 50-50 mix, as I want this to be a nice sort of dark color, which will amplify the shadows. I'm gonna mix the strong dark blue and black, but this time it's gonna be a two to one mix, and that's two to one of dark blue to black. Now I'm gonna start applying this to most of the surfaces of the cloth. So now I'm going to start applying pure strong dark blue to start to bring up that transition in tone. I'm going to add a lighter colour to the mix. I'm going to use pale blue and strong dark blue in a 50-50 ratio. I'm going to start adding this to the highlight areas of the cloth and I'm also going to apply this in a scratchy sort of motion in order to have the fabric translate. Okay, so I'm still going to continue with the pale blue and strong dark blue mix, but this time it's going to be pale blue to strong dark blue, two to one. Now I'm going to use this as the final highlight and I'm still going to apply that sort of scratchy texture because you still want that variation showing through. Now finally, I'm going to use Black Templar Contrast Paint by Games Workshop. And I dilute this at about 50-50 because I don't want the contrast paint to overpower all the work I've just done. So I apply this and I try to push it into the shadows and the recesses a bit more, which will amplify our very first step, which was the black and strong dark blue mix. We're now going to move on to the leather sections of the model. So that'll be the belt sort of across his chest and across his waist. And it'll also apply to like the gun holster as well. So I'm going to apply a base coat of AK Interactive Russian Dark Brown all over the leather parts of the model. With the Russian Dark Brown now dry from our previous step, I'm going to mix grey brown and Russian dark brown, ratio of two to one. I do this so that I can start building up lighter worn areas of the model. So now I'm going to apply pure grey brown onto the edges of all the leather pieces. As you can see, I'm going for a slightly sort of scratchy sort of motion on those edges. Now the trick with leather is, in my opinion, you want it to look a little bit aged and weathered and the way you do that is you sort of mix up some of the tones that you see in leather and reference photos could be really useful when trying to produce this kind of effect. So finally 
I'm going to add Agrax Earthshade. Now I dilute this again at about 50-50 with water and again I just apply this all over those leather pieces and I find that it really ties all those sort of tones together. Okay so some of you have probably noticed I've actually painted the hair on the model. Now I've decided to change the hair because I didn't like the light blonde sort of hair with that lighter skin tone. So instead, I'm gonna repaint it. I'm gonna go in with a mix of burnt red and black, about 50-50, and I'm gonna base coat that because ultimately I'm gonna make this like a reddish, gingery sort of color. So now I apply pure burnt red, and now I'm applying it to all the areas apart from the recesses of the hair. I'm gonna add blood red and burnt red at a 50-50 ratio. And I do this because I want to start lightening up that red. Now you need to be a bit more careful in the application because you don't want to cover the previous steps. You just want to get thinner and thinner and focus more on the highlighted areas as in those facing upwards on the model. So now we are onto pure blood red. And again, you want to be very careful in the application as you want to apply in thin strokes all along the edges of the hair, trying not to mask the previous steps. So now to sell the sort of ginger hair effect, we need to start adding a bit more orange into there. So firstly, I do this by adding some light rust and blood red in a 50-50 mix. And we're going to apply this to a smaller area to add that depth to the hair. Finally, we're going to add some pure light rust. And we're just going to apply this now to the very highlights of the hair. And you can add this again in sort of a feathery sort of motion. I found towards the face because you can actually add a bit more texture and depth to that area which is where most people are going to look at first. Okay now onto the bone section so that's going to be the horns, the hooves and if you had a slightly bigger model you can do like nails and things as well but with this one it's quite small so it's harder to do. Now what I find is really useful is again you build up the sort of tones in that. I tend to use dark browns up to sort of yellowy brown and then up to a lighter sort of beige almost white. You can also depending on the effect you want you can either start darker at the bottom and go up to light or you can start dark and go down to light as well. I think I said that wrong, didn't I? From dark all the way up to white, or you can flip it and actually have it darker at the tip and go all the way down to light at the base. So in this case, I'm gonna start with a base coat of grim brown, and I'm gonna go from dark to light. So to build up that transition of color, we're gonna begin by using AK Interactive British Uniform Base, and I apply that to most of the horn, except for the recesses and the very sort of bottom of the horns itself. I'm then going to use AK Australian Camo and go over the British Uniform Base colour we just applied and again covering a little bit less than the previous step because you want that previous sort of colour to shine through. Something that I find really important when you're painting any sort of bones or feature on any model is that you want to try to add a little bit of texture to it. And finally sort of solidify that transition of colour. I'm going to use AK Interactive Sand Beige and I'm just going to be focusing on using that on the very tip of the horns and I find applying a layer of Agrax Earthshade which is thinned at about 50-50 with water because it helps bring out all those previous darker base colours. Okay, so now we're on to something new, even for me. Now I've experimented a little bit in the past but I've always got a bit frustrated with it and given up and just reverted back to my old habits and this relates to metallics. So I'm really going to try and do a non-metallic metal on this as opposed to using a, a metallic paint. So for those of you who don't know, non-metallic metal is basically using non-metallic paints but using a uh, build-up of colour to try to create the effect of gold or silver or steel. You know, you can see this in really old painting and artwork where they didn't actually have metallic sort of paints to work with. So to begin with, I'm going to try to create a sort of warm brown colour. Now I'm going to add British Uniform Base to Burnt Red at a 50-50 mix and I apply this all over the belt. I then go in with pure British Uniform Base and I want to start trying to build up light volumes to try to sell it as a metallic material. So now with British Uniform applied, I'm going to start adding golden brown. Now golden brown is quite a step up in colour as it's definitely more yellow. And I'm going to start applying this to help create light volumes. 
and I'm going to apply this with some of that British uniform from the previous step still showing through because we want to sell the effect that light is reflecting and as light is reflecting onto the material it is getting brighter. I'm now going to add golden yellow to golden brown at a 50-50 mix. Now golden yellow is way brighter than golden brown and with the same principle as I mentioned in the previous step it's to amplify that light volume using it on less of the miniature as we go along. Right, so we're nearly there. I'm now going to use pure golden yellow, and this is the penultimate highlight. And to finish, I'm going to use pure ice yellow, which is borderline white, but it's got a yellowish tint to it. And this is going to be used for the very top highlights on the material. As you can see, what I've tried to achieve is a light reflection going across both corners of the belt. I really did try to push it, and I'm still very much a novice when it comes to non-metallic metal. Do I think it's worth it? Honestly, as a skill, I think it's definitely something that is worth knowing. You guys can be the judge of if you think I pulled it off or not, but I'm ultimately quite happy with how it turned out, with the exception of the shoulder pads. Um, the shoulder pads I found really difficult, actually, to get that build up to make it look convincing. So I'm going to start with pure German grey. Now I'm going to move on to German grey with ash grey at a 50-50 mix. And I'm going to start adding those volumes to the shoulder pads where the light's going to be hitting it. With that applied, I now go to pure ash grey to begin that highlighting step. Now I'm going to lighten ash grey by adding white. Now it's going to be a mix of ash grey to white 2 to 1, focusing on a smaller surface area. We now go on to ash grey and white 50-50, because now we want the grey to really start turning more to a white. We now go to white mixed with ash grey at a 2 to 1 ratio. So this is a very pale grey now, borderline white. And for the final highlight, we're going to go with pure white, and this is only going to be applied to the smallest areas or areas where I feel there'd be the most reflection. And I've done this because basically you really want to sell the idea of light bouncing off of it at its highest point. Now I'm going to glaze a heavily watered down German grey all over the shoulder pads to try and tie all those greys together. But yeah, I think it's just another skill set that, you know, if you're really into painting, it's something that you should try. Even if you fail, it doesn't really matter. You can just start again and try to build it up. And yeah, you can also just go back to your metallics if you decide that's not the look you want to go for. Okay, so now the bulk of the model done. We're now going to focus on some of the smaller details. That's going to be things like the pistol, scars and eyes. So I'm now going to start using glazes. I effectively add water to paint at a 2 to 1 ratio. To begin with, I start with blood red and I apply that to the lower three quarters of the pistol. Now to go lighter, I'm adding some light rust to the blood red at a 50-50 mix. And finally, I want to emphasise those edges, so I'm going to edge highlight in pure light rust. Now for the grenade, it's going to be quite simple. I'm going to cover all the raised edges of the grenade in AK Interactive Black Green. Once that has dried, I make a mixture of frog green mixed with black green at a 50-50 mix. And to finish the highlight, I then go in with pure frog green. Now for the lips, I wanted to tie some of that blue back into the model. I used strong dark blue from the earlier step, but I added a little bit of white to it at about a 50-50 mix. And then for the scars, I just used Bugman's Glow from Citadel, and I then highlighted that with Bugman's Glow plus white at a 50-50 mix. And for the eye, I basically repeated the steps that we used for the pistol. And for the barbed wire around the mace, I decided to cover that in Dirty Down Rust to make it stand out from the steel underneath. Okay, so now that all the little details are finished, the model's done, effectively. Uh, you guys can base it how you want. I'm doing a snowscape for mine. And I think it's always important to remember how important those little details are. Trying to do like a little light reflection in the eye, um, the slight variation in skin tone on the scars. It really does help tie your model together and it is more readable. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, as always, I'll put links in the description for all the tools and paints I've used throughout this entire process. It'd mean a lot if you guys could like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now it's time for the reveal. See you next time.